Welcome to the sixth annual Connections Project. It's an honor for me to be here to represent the faculty and staff of the College of Western Idaho. And I'm also representing the Connections Project Committee. The Connections Project started in 2016 by the faculty and staff who wanted to inspire connections across the college and with our community. We also wanted to celebrate student achievement. Our goal then and now is to promote creativity, academic excellence, and engagement across disciplines. At CWI, we have 18 different clubs and organizations for students to join. And I would like to introduce Will Young to you, who is active in our clubs. Will is the vice president of the speech and debate team and the president of the Queers and Allies Club. Will was the quarter finalist in extemporaneous and persuasive speaking and the sixth place finalist in the impromptu speaking at the 2021 Pi Kappa Delta National Tournament in Texas. This is the first year that that national tournament was held virtually. I would like to welcome Will to be our MC today. And good job, Will. Thank you, Jenna. <clears throat> I really have to thank the speech and debate team, our coaches and everyone involved for our victory this year at Pi Kappa Delta. So, Let's get on with our event this evening. Each year, CWI students submit designs for the Connections Project logo. The winning design was created by Matthias Haramoto Piet, a hand surrounded by icons which represent the connections available to us. Congratulations. Now, the juried art show winner was chosen by Alice Vinson, Associate Professor of Art who is the chair of the art department at the College of Idaho, where she teaches courses in book arts, illustration, and digital media. Most of her courses explore the use of both traditional and digital methods, allowing students an opportunity to create work that reflects their own personal style. Her own work, which also uses these methods, includes artist books and installations. Alice earned an associate's in fine arts from Pima Community College and received her BFA and MFA degrees from the University of Arizona. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Alice Vincent to the stage. Thank you, Will. So it's a pleasure to be here. I want to thank CWI for letting me jury this exhibition. Um, I was, it was an honor. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the work that I was able to jury. And I just wanted to say I was really pleasantly surprised to see the amazing work that came from CWI. Um, I was astonished at the technical ability of the students as well as their ability to really take on a project and think about it as a whole. Um, for instance, there was one piece in particular that comes to mind where there was a frame included as part of the piece that provided a juxtaposition um, against an image of a dumpster. And I just thought this whole idea of the juxtaposition and taking that um, into consideration really kind of pushed that art piece forward. Um, again, there was so much talent. I was just shocked. Um, there was, it, it was really a wonderful and a tough decision to make when I was having to choose a single winner. Um, so congratulations to everyone for doing such a wonderful job. And I'm going to move on to go ahead and announce the winner this year, which was Madeline Gentry. And she did a set of photographs titled The Waiting Game. And I'm going to read her artist statement. The Waiting Game. It has been one year since COVID-19 was declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization. In this year, we have done a lot of waiting. Waiting for a test. Waiting for a cure. Waiting in social isolation. Waiting in self-quarantine. Waiting for this to all be over. While much of the pandemic has been a year of unknown timing, the waiting game depicts two measurable intervals of time many have faced in the past year, 20 minutes and 14 days. It was a really beautiful artist statement when I read it, and I think it went incredibly well with the imagery. The diptych, I kind of, just to give you a little idea of why I chose this piece, I was, over the course of the last year, we've all kind of suffered through COVID-19 
And this piece stood out to me because it was one of the first pieces of art that I've seen that hasn't really taken a side. It seemed very neutral. And it was about something that we could all relate to, regardless of our position on COVID, regardless of a position on masks or vaccinations. I think we could all relate to this isolation and sense of desolation and boredom. Um, the work was really well done. Um, the many layers that you, are, that you see with the work provided this almost ethereal dreamlike quality to it, which again, made me feel kind of as, I guess I could relate to it a lot, having been in isolation for so long. Um, really beautifully well done pieces. And then to top it off, what <laughs> I had noticed at the very end was the really well balanced um, color palette and the fact that she actually snuck in a little bit of blue in each spot. So the color palette to me again was a, a little bit monotonous, but in a way that really works with our lives that we've had in the past year. Um, overall, I just thought they were really beautiful pieces that I think speak to everyone. And I think they're a good representation of what we've all gone through the last year. And I think they were just fantastic um, overall. They were very touching, um, very, very nice work. So congratulations to Madeline. Um, Gentry, and thank, thank you for again to CWI for having me and giving me this opportunity. And congratulations to all of you who entered. You did a beautiful job and you should be very proud. Thank you, Professor Vinson. I also deeply enjoyed um, Madeline's work and their artist statement. Very moving piece. All right, next we will get to the President's Writing Awards. The President's Writing Award is an annual writing contest that recognizes excellence in student writing at the College of Western Idaho. We are here to celebrate writing from all disciplines and from a variety of perspectives. Written work was read, read and judged by CWI instructors, and the finalists were sent to President Glandon, who determined first, second, and third place winners. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome President Glandon to the stage. Thank you, Will. I appreciate that. <clears throat> and by the way, that speech and debate team, this is the eighth year of being a national champion out of 10 years of competing. That's phenomenal. No other school has ever achieved that status. So as the President's Writing Awards, I will tell you that it has been a thrill, an honor, and a privilege to be involved in this activity over the last several years. Um, <clears throat> I read each category and uh, this year was extremely stressful in terms of the quality of work that was coming in was amazing. Uh, one could use the words for some of the uh, writing assignments as shock and awe. Others could be used as just absolutely amazing writings for this uh, level of uh, delivery. Uh, I have for the last several years been amazed at the kinds of uh, research that's been done, the kinds of creative analysis that's been done. And I will tell you, that the top three uh, candidates in each one of these categories, uh, I would read them and then I'd wait a day or two and then reassess them again. And this has been the most difficult year trying to determine between first place, second place and third place. And many times there was a week or more that would pass and I'd go, these two are just, it's impossible. It's right, like trying to judge the Olympics where there's a tenth of a second between each one of them. But they have been some phenomenal writers this year, and I want to congratulate all of the finalists. Uh, they have done an excellent job, and I want to also thank the faculty who have worked with them, because obviously this kind of uh, academic success doesn't come without some true mentorship and some true leadership in terms of faculty delivering high-quality instruction to the students. So with that, let us get to the award winners. In the creative nonfiction, third place, uh, Susan Whirlinger, The Interpretation of Life with Death, took third place. Congratulations. Second place in creative nonfiction is Carmen O'Donnell. Smurf was the name, the title of her uh, a, a paper. And in first place, creative nonfiction, Kelly Longan, uh, The Last Desert Legend. 
uh, took first place. Thank, congratulations, Kelly, it was a terrific job. In critical analysis, third place was Monica Lang, Tactical Triumphs. In second place was Abigail Sperry, Anacinimism in American Colleges. First place, Corey Broll, Wicked, The Importance of Upholding Your Morals. Congratulations, Lori, on a phenomenal job as first place in critical analysis. The next category is fiction. Third place in fiction was Mandy Jameson on matters of love and nuclear fission. Second place, Miguel Cox, Fool's Gold. In first place, Kevin Panetta, The Seven Day Forecast. Congratulations to those three in that category. Again, a very difficult decision selecting first, second, and third places. First year writing, and believe me, this is a category that caught me off guard completely. First year writing, the third place award winner is Allie Murphy, the lucky one. Second place winner is Anastasia English. Tr Trition Revolution, fighting for Iraq's future. And first place in the first year writing is Enrique Antonio Rodriguez, Finding Light. Congratulations to each and every one of you. And Enrique, congratulations on receiving the first place award. Literature based, the third place winner in literature base was Lauren Verhegan, Annexation of Hawaii. Second place winner, Sunny Breathway, Emma Bowman, Aisha Silva, and Mariah Vade. Thank you. I apologize in advance for any pronunciations that are wrong, and I've tried to get some support here in terms of making it. This uh, paper was called The Analysis of Counterfactual Thoughts, Patterns of Repeat Criminal Offenders, and that's the second place winner in literature base. The first place winner in literature based is Andrew Rose, Andrew Rose, Election Interference and Evolution Strategic Situation. Congratulations, Andrew. Original research, and by the way, I had some help on this one. I took some of this research and had some other input from it as well. This research that was done in this particular category is absolutely first class and phenomenal. So my congratulations to all three winners in this category. Third place in original research was Gabriella Peck, Mindfulness and Well-Being. Second place, Joanna Beck. Original research first place was Rachel Capelza. And it's Sage Step post-fire recovery dynamics on Broslem Tectrum native bunch grass and uh, Artemisia tridentidera at Deer Flat National Wildlife Refuge. And believe me, if you've read, if you have a chance to read any of this research, research go out to Deer Flat National Wildlife Refuge and you'll see some of the great things that are happening out there. Poetry. This category in third place was Nat Natanya Hitchcock, A Place to Breathe. Second place winner was Rebecca Young, I Was Formed By. And the first place winner in po poetry was Calvin Panetta, Song for a Postmodern Lazarus. Technical writing, third place was Gambria Copes, Copes Party Proposal. Second place winner was Amelia Ann Bailey, Treasure Valley Catering Services Request for Proposal. And the first place winner in technical writing was Rachel Capeza, Website Evaluation and Recommendations Report. Thank you, Will. Thank you, President Glanton. And thank you for all the students who received awards, including my mom. <clears throat> all right. 
Well, now we will get into the Connections Excellence Awards. This year's Connection project included posters, mini presentations, and club submissions. Finalists in each category were determined by a panel of judges. Each winner will receive a $100 prize for their work in each one of the following categories. Club submissions, mini talks that inspire, mini talks that connect, posters that inspire, and posters that connect. First place for club submissions goes to Biology Club for Pollinator Garden Virtual Tour. Inspire Talks runner-up goes to Michelle Petit for pitching a fictitious website design to the business owners. Inspire Talks first place goes to Christina Turley, Brooklyn Miller, and Camille Slack for Police Reform, Response to Mental Health Crisis Calls. Connect Talks runner-up goes to Anastasia English for Women of Ancient Athens. Connect Talks first place goes to Kate Jones for Origins of a Republic, America's Role in the Formation of the Republic of Liberia. Inspire poster runner-up goes to McKenna Duggar for Negleria Flauleri, Transmission Slash Prevention of Primary Amoebic Meningoencephalitis, or PAM. Inspire poster runner-up goes to Marty Lawhorn for Service as a Teacher's Assistant. Inspire poster first place goes to Tori Cardwell, for Human Rhino slash Enterovirus. Connect poster runner-up goes to Emily Craner for Please Don't. Connect poster runner-up goes to Julie Meyer for Promoting Student Success. And finally, Connect poster first place goes to Annie Colombato for Reimagining College. I'd like to thank all of the judges, instructors, and participants for celebrating in the Connections program today. Thank you also to the Connections Project Committee. Congratulations to each of the students today, and we celebrate your creativity and excellence.